to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Please do not forget what I want to share with you now. Please look up. Let me establish probably the last prayer point or so. The gospel, the gospel that we, that we preach has two sides to it. There is the message that saves. That is the first dimension of the gospel, the message that saves. And the key to propagating that message is evangelism. Are we together? But there is the second dimension to it, the ideology that transforms society. So there are two sides to the gospel. There is the message that saves. There is the ideology that transforms society. The key to advancing the message is called evangelism. But the key to advancing the ideology is called influence. I'm establishing my prayer request now my prayer point so for you to completely preach the gospel you need to embrace the message that saves that deals with you personal salvation but territorial salvation is the mindset that is introduced into systems and structures that enthrones Christ are we together now if you focus only on the message that saves you will be saved as an individual but your territory will frustrate your christian experience an example was lot in sodom and gomorrah lot was a righteous man as a person but he was among a people who were depraved and he could not find expression so there are two keys to kingdom advance number one is evangelism number two is influence satan has a primary assignment to stop both but if for any reason he can't do anything about your receiving jesus now your personal salvation is a done deal the next place of attack is your influence what is influence influence is the capacity to cause men to buy into your ideologies without using force or cruelty Territories can be changed overnight with the power of influence. Cultures are shaped through influence. The Bible says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. Can I tell you, most people downplay the power of influence. At every point in your life, someone is influencing you. And you are to bring the influence of the kingdom. Satan will fight influence in any way he can i want to show you a scripture because the gates of influence is about to open for someone are we together in isaiah chapter 60 when you read from verse 1 to 3 it says arise shine for your light has come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you I would like to quote this many times from Amplified. It says, Arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new light. It says, For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Listen carefully. Verse 2 says, For darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen in you. Verse 3 influence gentiles all nations shall come not to you to your light 
and even their arrogant kings their kings already have results they won't come to your light they come to the brightness of your rising are we together the end time church is going to advance the frontiers of the kingdom not only through evangelism and discipleship but it will come through influence acts chapter 12 oh someone's life is changing acts chapter 12 from verse 1 please do not forget this scripture and this revelation now watch this you know that the disciples of jesus i want to show you how satan fights influence you know the disciples of jesus were in different levels there was the 70 or 72 he had the 12 but there were three people there were things that they saw the rest did not see and satan marked every one of them he started by beheading james it was peter james and john the threefold cord that cannot be easily, easily broken when he found james and they beheaded him he went straight to paul the bible says they killed james and he saw that it pleased the jews and he went straight to peter during the days of the unleavened bread be patient let's read the bible says when he had apprehended peter he put him in where prison what was he fighting he put him in prison you would think that would be enough but then he brought four quaternions of soldiers to still keep him in prison it was not just confinement he wanted four eight soldiers again covered him intending after easter to bring him forth before the people verse 5 the bible says peter therefore was kept in prison Please help me finish the remaining part of that sentence. But prayer was made. This was what was not done for James. Unfortunately, there is no record that they stood in for James. And James died. But when Peter was there, the church said, no way. There is something we can do. Please keep it there. We are still reading. The Bible says prayers was made without season of the church unto God for him. The result, verse 6. The Bible says, and when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains. Abba, you lock a man in prison, tie him with chains, and put eight soldiers that's not a fight for liberty is influence and the bible says that the keepers were there before the door who kept the prison verse 7 and behold the angel of the lord came in response to prayer listen and a light shined in that prison and he smote peter on the side and raised him up saying arise up quickly and his chains fell from his hands verse 8 the bible says the angel said guard yourself and bind on thy sandals and so he did and he said unto him cast thy garment about thee and follow me verse 9 and when he went out listen carefully he followed him and wished not that which was true which was done by the angel but he thought he saw a vision now verse 10 the bible says he held peter the angel and they passed the first and second ward or gate watch this now they passed the first gate he was no longer in prison but he was still confined they passed the second gate far from the prison but still no liberty and the bible says and they came to the iron gate which leaded to where so there is a gate that leads to the city every man's city is his place of influence did the bible not say you are <laughs> listen there is a gate that leads to the city when that gate opens 
the city must see you for who you are and now begin to place a demand the iron gate that leads to the city businessmen hear me you can be in a city and yet spiritually you are not there because there are gates that must open I understand what I'm telling you listen in Zaria one time there are few only few people here that really understand you know that may know Zaria the Lord asked me to trek from a place quite far in town and to trek down till a place called aviation and I was trekking and just speaking over that territory because there are spirits that reside over that place I know what it means for the tulip gates of a city to be opened can I tell you you can be doing I've seen many gifted people sir anointed and sincere but the gates that leads to the city has not been opened I've seen business people who cannot understand preachers sincere love God anointed but the two leaf gates in ancient times you would never come into a city until the gate is open is that true every city spiritually has gates just because you move there physically does not mean the gate is open there is a protocol to influence now watch this the first gate opened the second gate opened and the bible says this very gate was called the iron gate and my bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder when jesus prophetically in psalm 24 was returning back to the land of the living there was a cry lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted ancient doors hold on those doors have been there for a long time they are used to closing over people and the gates replied who is this king of glory can i tell you this listen for a few of you who may have seen the posters that and i'm saying this respectfully of my coming into the city when i was praying that map of abuja or something there's one I, I i don't i still don't know the names of your cities you won't believe it cities is city gates there's one map there like that that was what i saw in my vision that was why i told them to put it in the you know the the billboard or whatever it is because you see let me tell you sincerely spiritually speaking gates have seen sit um, um cities have gates you want to understand this properly go to the north you won't get it very well around the south you go to the north you see the entrance of every major place you see that now the gates do not have anything closing them but you enter and believe you are in you the city will show you you are not invited There are many business people in Abuja. You see, the Bible says they know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Psalms 82 and now verse 5. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. The tragedy is verse 7. It says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. It takes high level spiritual illumination to be able to command authority even in prayer the foundation for effective prayer is access to the mysteries of the kingdom so that you pray in keeping with the will of God you can know your prayer will be answered your intelligence is consistent with scripture you are not praying amiss the iron gate that opens to the city can I tell you this some of you here are business people some of you here have schools you're running some of you here might be other ministers who came that there is a gate 
that has to open but when that gate opens you will marvel and wonder the bible says gideon blew a trumpet and 33,000 people you would think he did, he did not know where they were hiding he just there was a shofar can i tell you there is an anointing called a hear ye him anointing people don't just listen to you because you have something to say it takes more than that this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased creation was given an instruction hear ye him when that grace comes on your business right from where you are when it comes upon the works of your hands i'm saying this because we're about to pray that that gate in the name of jesus christ must be opened hither and thither because the king of glory wants to make a triumphant entry are you ready to pray lift your voice and decree and declare gates a fata be open gates a fata hither and thither be open gates be open Gates be open. And the balako shadikate predikate la pasta. The iron gate be broken, be open. Gates of influence, the gates that leads to the city, be open, be open. The King of Glory desires to come in. Be open. the name of the Lord in Jesus name let me pray for you now you have done the praying second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 from the rising of the Sun to the setting of the same your name is to be from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be Second Corinthians, I want you to be very sensitive now. You have prayed. Let me pray for you. Second Corinthians 9 and verse 8. Hallelujah. Amen. 
sir ordinarily i would have told you this maybe privately in the office but the lord is asking me to say it in the open i just saw a vision and i saw you and your wife and i saw it was like two ships and you were walking and you had gotten to the end of one ship and i saw a hand stretched and it held you to another ship and it began to move i believe i not not this answer i believe that another phase of ministry you share what i'm saying go and write it down in addition to what you are currently doing another strange apostolic and dim and prophetic dimension of ministry is opening because this instruction to pray for a long time there are many things that god has not said yet that by by the end of it he will tell why he called for a fast like this just believe me that this fasting is midwifing one season into another that's why god is saying i should say it openly so that the day he tells you they will know that it's not you that just said it that's why i'm saying it in the open ordinarily i may just go and tell him in the office i saw a hand like a sheep sheep and just held him and another season so don't you be surprised what will come out by revelation in the course of this fasting do not think it is the flesh but hear me it is another dimension of ministry this is true it is another dimension of ministry and there are three very strong anointings that will in multiplied dimensions would start working in the life of this man and his wife number one is the teaching grace number two is the healing grace number three is the prophetic grace these three graces in strong dimensions you would begin to see testimonies and manifestations of the hand of god this word would not fail it will happen by the spirit the second thing i want to say and i apologize again god is asking me to say it and i'm saying it in the open your membership have not yet come the people you are raising are leaders by the time the leaders are raised it will be like an inferno of fire the kind of training you are giving these people is not for membership there is a strengthening they are building capacity because the oil stops when there is no more vessel and so he's listen many of you here you think you are just members of a ministry you are the leaders he's building capacity when he's done it was when the ark was ready that the animals started coming they don't come to wait until the ark i'm speaking this by prophecy an ark of three stories of gopher wood is being built even in this ministry and with this man and when that ark is done the same grace that brought the animals on their own they came two by two and seven by seven they will come by the spirit it will be a wonder to behold what god can do with a man who hears him give jesus praise now i want to pray for you do you believe in the power of god second corinth please stand sir please second corinthians 9 and verse 8 listen after tonight you must do well to go and invite everybody you know look at what i mean as you are here i'm sure some of you is paining you right now that my loved ones should be here i was glad when they said unto me let us go not let me go let us go it's wrong when you are going alone it is let us go anything that is godly is always let us let us make let us go and god is able to make all grace not some grace grace is in dimensions god is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency in how many things 
may abound unto every good work let me explain this scripture that means god is able to coordinate every grace you need and to bring it within your reach this scripture is based on the principle that what is on you is what controls what is around you your results are a report card telling us what is on you or not on you thou anointest my head with oil not my cup it is my head that is anointed but i know the size of what is on my head by looking at my cup if my cup is overflowing it means what is on me is overflowing so the physical results in your life are attestations to the grace the kind and the level of grace that you carry are we together you can know that the grace that is upon you has multiplied by the results that change you can know what kind of grace you carry by the testimonies that recycle around your life they are receipts when they change something changed are we together meetings like this by the Spirit of God leads us to pray but then it gives us an opportunity to be able to take something upon our heads that we did not come to church with you can carry something that you did not come with the Bible says when the donkey of Kish was missing they went three days this young man called Saul hmm. and after three days when they did not find it he said let's return back he said no we've left too much there is a seer let us go to that man the word of the Lord does not fail and as soon as they saw Samuel I was so blessed when your man of God made a profound statement he said God's strategy is man it's not a lie when the devil wants to destroy you he introduces a man when God wants to help you he introduces a man in any case it will still be by the ministry of man are we together we are nothing on our own except for the graces that we carry listen the grace of God is a mysterious advantage when it comes upon a man with understanding it can turn the narrative of your destiny in one day when they met Samuel look at a problem that was costing them so much difficulty but as soon as they met a man look at how he trivialized that problem Samuel said no go up I will tell you what is in your heart as soon as Saul saw Samuel the donkey started returning home nobody asked the donkey to return home as soon as Saul met with Samuel be careful what you call impossible there are graces that have been anointed to trivialize your challenges and make it look as if the devil does not exist three things happen when Saul met with Samuel number one he said is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be captain over his inheritance and he poured oil on his head and said three things will happen to you number one the ass the donkey that has been missing you will find out that restoration has happened the anointing can bring restoration that means just because it left you does not mean it left the earth it is still there under a certain condition it can come back number two he said on your way going you will find three men holding two loaf of bread they will salute you and they will give it to you as if they did not know what to do with the bread they bought bread and were on their way home but because of what was on you they will give you two loaf say favor say honor number three it says you will come to a garrison of the philistines and when you get there something will happen to you and you will now begin to prophesy and he so prophesied that they said is saul when did saul who trained you we know how long it took for us to be prophets by what mystery did you access this anointing that by april you will invite someone and say come to my house 
and you'll be driving very far thinking is where he knew you to be the last time you met and he will tell you no 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 i forgot to tell you i'm no longer there listen can i tell you this please hear me i believe in diligence i believe in process but there is a prophetic advantage to living can i tell you this true dominion the zenith of dominion is dominion over time not things time you are truly walking in dominion when you can compress time and i will restore not the things the years let me tell you how god restores and i will pray with you i hope i'm not wasting your time that means you see in the presence of god there's nothing like past present and future that's a reality that only resides within the realm of men he only broke his realm into this tripartite the trinity of time past present and future to help mankind relate with him but god does not live in time he does not even live in eternity because eternity is also time it's just time without end god's realm is called now everything is a present reality you see in truth so when god reaches into what you call he can go into your yesterday and your tomorrow you see physically when you leave yesterday you don't go back again that privilege was not given to men ordinarily except by the gifts of the spirit and you can tap into information but from a physical standpoint when it's gone it's gone but god will find out based on his predetermined counsel listen carefully how god restores the things that should have happened to you because with every time god gives you there are things that should have happened if by demonic manipulation or your ignorance or carelessness that thing did not happen god will go back into it and push the thing to your future and make it happen again are we together so if by god's predetermined counsel you should be in your own house by 2018 but by lack of sensitivity you did not take advantage of the prophetic word that came from the man of god maybe at that time you were not serious spiritually and you trivialized the word you see that now the house you are building now is not the same one that should have come so what god does is that instead of you going through the labor of building it he can fix that rep that blessing under a class of blessings called prepared blessings hear me there are times that god will send rain on your farm and the crops will grow well you will do the harvesting and the storage but there are times the urgency in your life does not require corn it requires bread directly both corn and bread it is still the same god who sends it god is able to give seed to the sower and bread to the eater what if the sower is hungry because there are times the sower is hungry and he will need to eat to have the strength to go and sow so god gives you bread so that from the strength of that bread you can go and sow are you learning now believing that the only channel of God's blessing is your farm you are limiting his potentials manna can come from heaven manna coming from heaven does not stop you from sowing it's an act of his mercy to make sure you are satisfied early then you go and sow your name is to be hallowed I spent one month it was a February sir the whole of that one month I was praying and studying on favor because I didn't come from a background that would easily give me that privilege and I knew that if I were to do ministry with integrity I would need the favor of God dearly beloved 
I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.